This medium sized fox is stalking the hedgerows and one lucky rabbit makes a very very quick getaway right under the fox's nose. I follow him around the other side of the hedge by the road and I actually catch him just standing in the field. He's looking at rabbits in the far distance. I need to grab his attention and I'll show you how I do it. So you saw the fox pass through the hedge and here he is and I'm making that squeaking noise basically imitating a wounded uh, rabbit or a rabbit that's been caught by another predator. That will usually hold a fox in its position. It will be so curious to the noise, thinking there could possibly be a free meal. It will just stay there and look for that noise. And on many occasions, the fox will actually come to you if you're hidden and out of sight. This fox is transfixed. It's looking at rabbits. It wants to go to them, but my noise is holding it transfixed. A magpie has just joined the uh, party, so to speak. And uh, it's looking like it's taunting the fox. But they do have a relationship where a magpie will actually get free scraps of food from the fox when it catches its prey. The fox, in return, gets the alarm calls from the magpie if there's any danger around. The magpie will make such a racket, the fox will instantly know there's danger and will obviously be pre-warned. So there is a relationship that these two animals do have. And uh, he's wised up to my noise and now he's uh, scooting down across the field in the direction of the rabbits. Because he can still see me, he was sitting still in the hedge, even though these rabbits are quite openly uh, available for him to hunt. And you'll just see him scurrying away in that hedge and he's making his way down into the valley in the woods. Now what you heard and saw me do there was uh, squeaking a fox and that is to either grab its attention and get it to stay still and on a lot of occasions they will actually come to you. He could actually see me um, from the shoulders and head so he just sat there and he was intrigued by the noise because it was the noise of a squealing rabbit and as you saw it was hunting the hedgerows so yeah that's what you call squeaking a rabbit to get the fox to go to ground as in stay still or come to you on that uh, very last clip you saw I did make a little bit of an error it's not squeaking a rabbit, it's squeaking a fox. Now, you do not want to keep doing that. And the simple reason is you will eventually condition a fox to um, associate that noise with getting no food and on top of that danger in itself. So with wild foxes, you know, squeak a fox by all means just for a bit of fun to get it to stand still or even come to you if you're hidden. But don't continually do it to the same fox because eventually they will learn that noise doesn't associate with a, a wounded um, rabbit or, or a distressed rabbit that they will possibly get a free meal and they will keep passing it up. And in, in doing so, they miss out on part of their um, food uh, supply, which they rely on, which is scavenging and taking, you know, injured um, rabbits out of the actual, um, well, environment. So, um, yeah, don't continually do it because you will eventually condition them. You know, but like I said, it, you do no harm if you do it once or twice. So, yeah, I hope you kind of enjoyed that. Sorry about the quality, but I'm doing everything on a budget phone and at distance. But I hope you kind of enjoyed seeing a little bit of nature in action there. And um, basically, you know, it's all out there. So, yeah, this is Andy from Hidden Valley Footpaths. I'm going to crack on with these hiking sticks that I've got here. This, um, you know, lovely oak handled shepherd's crook I've just uh, shaped. And um, I've got a lot of work and I'll be working into the evening. So all the best. Take care and stay safe. I hope to see you guys on the trail.